Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on this video. I appreciate your support. For those that are new and haven't discovered my channel yet, what I do is I take projects from the popular electronics magazines that they used to publish from 1954, I think, up until about 2003. What I do is I go back in time and I, re I build the projects that are in there. So every month, uh, they had one, if not two, construction projects that you could build. And it was things from amplifiers to uh, test equipment, you name it. And in fact, this, uh, this project that I'm building now comes from the March 1981 uh, magazine. And it's a reactance meter. So it'll actually measure inductance <clears throat> and capacitance. Now, I, I realize I have an LCR meter here. But hey, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, building these things. So that's what I do, is I try for every week to pick a project out of a magazine, build it, and then show you all, and then move on to the next one. So this is what we're going to do this time. It's the reactance meter, like I mentioned. It's, um, it's quite an involved one. So there's the PC board. And I know a lot of you probably think I'm going to get this one screwed up, but I'm not. I use the toner transfer method, and this one here, this isn't the actual copy, but I'm going to print it out um, on a different piece of paper, which I can do the toner transfer with, is the correct version. So I'll have the soldering on this on the on this side, and I'll have the components on the other side. So yeah, like I said, it's a reactance measuring set. It's going to measure from one microhenry to one henry and then one picofarad to one microfarad so the range is limited i get it but we're just having fun right and it uses a multimeter too to actually give us the display or the inductance or the capacitance so i've got the components at least most of them i did get an order from digikey so some of the uh, other parts are in there and i've got a pc board and yeah, I think I have most of the things. So let's get building this project and I'll bring you back in when I get the traces from the magazine onto my PC board and we'll etch it at that point. All right, I'll bring you back in soon. Okay, so I've got the toner transfer process completed. Now, when I was putting it through the laminator, um, the, the center part didn't seem like it was, um, I guess, Adhe adhering to the actual board and now you got to remember I'm looking at the paper plus the board going through I'm not too sure but what I did is I got an iron out and then I ironed the center portion more now this is a big board it's about 190 millimeter by 165 so it's fairly big and um, this blank spot here I just realized I'm pretty sure that's where the transformer will go because this section here is for the diodes the rectifier etc now there is one trace that didn't take and you can kind of see that there um, but not a problem I'll uh, I can fix that and the reason was it was because I think from using the iron it seemed like everything was good you know with the paper still attached to the board but then when I put it in the cold water to take the paper off, I noticed there were some spots that were really, really hard. And I think that was one of them. So I had to take the paper off very gently. And I have a funny feeling it's because of the iron. So I probably won't use that anymore. I'll just stick with the laminator. It should do just fine. So anyway, this board will go into the etchant next and then uh, I'll bring it back in and we'll see how it looks. And I'm pretty sure I got it right this time. In fact, I know I got it right. So these two chips here are my reference. So when I etch the board and I flip it over to the other side, these will be on the other side. And that's exactly where I want them for component placement. Anyway, I'll bring you back in. Okay, good news. The etching went well. And uh, yeah, as you can see, the board looks pretty good. Now, again, I got that one trace there. I could fix that, not a problem. When I get to that point or that component, I'll fix it at that point. So yeah, it uh, turned out pretty good. I buzzed out all of the traces and they're all good. And um, yeah, so thanks to the people that helped me out on a video earlier, a couple of weeks ago, where I asked for some help in terms of getting better quality from the magazine. So I found uh, originally, I would just take this uh, 
PC board from the magazine as uh, as gospel, and then I would just transfer it uh, through toner transfer and the laminator to the board. Well, I found out it be the the board traces were a little bit airy because it's not perfectly black, and and especially for this one, as you can see, the traces are actually white as opposed to being black. So that's a big problem. Um, but with the help of people. They helped me out and suggested I use a program called GIMP, G-I-M-P. It's a photo editing program, and it's great. And I remember using that about 10 years ago. It's freeware, and it works really good. And not only that, with GIMP, what you can do is you can invert the image. So you can see this is the original from the magazine, and this is the final copy. Um, but you can see the actual traces are now black as opposed to being white. So with a couple of clicks, you could just invert the colors and you can increase the contrast so you can see this is really dark so you can in increase the contrast between the white and the black which helps out a lot and you can actually invert the image so that the uh, traces or the components would be on the right side that you want when you actually etch the board so thanks to them I really learned a lot and uh, still learning um, but as for this board, it's good. So the next step is we're going to drill it out. So I'll drill it out and then I'll start putting components on it. And I'll update you as I get, let's say, half the components done and we'll see how it's going. All right, hang in there and I'll bring you back soon. Okay, so good news. Things are coming along just fine. Um, I probably got less than half the parts in on the board, but it's coming along. Nothing has sprung up so far. Um, yeah, so things are going great. So I'll probably continue going on. And when I get the entire board done, I'll bring you all back in. Now, I was thinking about cases. And uh, this one's kind of like a sloped from what I could see in this picture, at least anyway. Yeah, it's sloped. So I was thinking about buying a sloped case from Hammond. So that's usually where I get my project boxes from. Now, I, I had a lot of boxes before I started this popular electronics series. And, you know, I probably bought them years ago and they were reasonable. Um, but lately, I've been going on uh, DigiKey for one to see the prices and they're ridiculous. So they have a sloped box from DigiKey. It is metal granted, but it's $72. And I don't think I want to spend uh, that much money. So what I did is I went on Amazon and I found, I think I found one that will probably suffice for this project. It's only, I think, $29 or 31 I think. So I think I'm going to go that route. But the boxes are expensive. So, you know, i got to keep that in mind. And remember, I'm, I probably, for every one of my projects that I build, I probably spend about $100. Now, as you can see, I've got lots of components so I can use them. But, you know, there are some parts that you just have to buy. And that's not a problem. But on average, I probably spend like $100 on every project. So I'm trying to uh, minimize the cost uh, of some of these projects. So I think I'll go with a cheaper box. I'm not yet monetized. In fact, I'm far from it. So I've got a little bit to go. Uh, but regardless, it's, you know, still a fair chunk of money. So anyway, that's where we are. When I get um, the board complete, I'll bring you back in and we'll see how things look. Okay, so it's been uh, a little while since I last left off the video. As you can see, all the parts are in, all the chips, the crystal, etc. Even the switches. Look at these switches here. Six position, two pull switch. And look at the wiring. It's all over the place. It's insane. Uh, the same with these switches here. Um, these are my binding posts for the testing of it. Um, you know, some more binding posts for the inductance and for the capacitance. Another switch. And all the wires go all over the place. It's insane. Um, anyway, it is done. And it does work. Now, this is definitely not a reactance measurement set that you'd want to build. It's pretty much useless. It works, but it's uh, it's not good. Uh, first of all, if anybody's following along at home, which I highly doubt, there are some uh, calibrations that are required. So it's to do with this pot, and there's a pot there, and there's a pot there. So the instructions, they 
do explain that very well. And uh, so this is perfectly working. Everything is 100% working. Uh, calibration went uh, fine and there's no issues there. So this is what the unit can do. I know it's very hard to see, um, but you can see uh, 10 picofarad, 10 microhenries. So that's what the, the multi-selection switch does. Now, the range isn't good, as you can see. It's only, uh, you know, it goes up to 0.1 microfarad, 100 millihenries. To be honest with you, I think I probably should have read the entire article before I started. I just got, you know, enthralled by the picture. I go, oh, okay, yeah, let's build this. It'll be great. Um, in a way, I shouldn't have built it, to be honest with you. So there's a, there's a lot going on here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just pause the video now and we'll talk about how to measure. And yeah, so I'll, I'll get right back to you. Okay, so before I demonstrate the actual uh, device itself, I just want to show you how insane the uh, instructions are on how to use the reactant measuring set. Um, you know, I mean... First of all, they don't even give you a real uh, meter comparison. So right now I've got this set up for 100 microhenries. I'm measuring inductance. Um, but they don't give you any example of what it should be, you know, with all the six ranges. So you're left to, to your own devices. However, I mean, the, the, the instructions are just uh, ridiculous. You know, they talk about, you know, whether you have... Uh, a ferrite type core or if it's an air type core um, you have to switch the ranges to something different and then to top it all off if you want to measure anything on the first range up to uh, what was it 10, 10 microhenries yeah 10 microhenries what you have to do is you have to uh, adjust the bias of um, uh, of these two transistors with a short circuit, measuring, um, uh, the, the, putting your multimeter uh, in uh, current mode and measuring milliamps and adjusting that pot to, you know, get, uh, I, in fact, I can't even remember. I'm just kind of looking at it really quickly here. Um, and that's even before you want to measure. So, you know, that's, it's kind of ridiculous. And they don't really tell you exactly what the measurement should be on the meter either, by the way. Um, yeah, so they keep on going on. We're just on the inductance at this point. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't suggest anybody build this circuit. Uh, capacitance, it's not as bad. But again, if anything's below, uh, what was it again? Um, 10, 10 picofarad. Again, you have to short out uh, the capacitance leads. Just, uh, you know, that pot again, this one here and just the bias of those two transistors. It's insane. And again, with capacitance, you're really not too sure what scale you're supposed to be reading on your multimeter, et cetera, et cetera. All right, with that said, you can see I'm not uh, too happy with this measuring set compared to something brand new like that, which will measure it with just, uh, you know, putting the device under test. Anyway, I mean, look, this is 1981. So I think at the time there probably wasn't a lot of cheap uh, or maybe there wasn't any uh, capacitor or inductance measuring sets. I'm sure there are but or were, but they were probably very expensive. So this was probably a solution uh, for the hobbyists, um, but it's horrible. And uh, so, yeah, so let's just talk about right now. I've got everything set up. I'm measuring. This is a 100 micro Henry's uh, uh, inductor. So I've got it set up. I'm on, uh, what am I on? I think I'm on the second scale. And I'm reading 0 0.920 um, volts. So I can only assume that equates to 100 microhenries on the uh, inductor. And in fact, I have measured some other inductors. And, you know, I get that comparison or ratio. Um you know, again, why even build the meter if you could just read it on the inductor itself? It's This looks like a resistor, but it's actually an inductor. So, yeah, there is the inductance. <laughs> um, anyway, let me uh, set it up for uh, capacitance, okay? So I'll uh, just uh, pause the video and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so we're at the uh, capacitance check right now. So I've got a 0.1 microfarad capacitor under test. And I measured that capacitance on a real capacitance meter, and it's 0 0.095 microfarad. Um, yeah, so I've got my voltmeter connected. I've got the capacitance uh, selection switch on. Um, selector switch is on the very last scale, so that'll be this one here, 0 0.1 microfarad. And what am I reading? I'm reading 0 0.7879. Uh, who knows? Maybe, yeah, 0 0.79. Anyway, again, I don't know what to, 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 to reference it for, but in terms of scaling, if I just moved one decimal over or something like that or uh, to the left, I don't know. I, I think it's giving me a reading of what it should be. But, again, who knows, right? It's just one of those things. Um project is not a winner that's for certain i mean it works it works 100 percent. however it's pretty useless and i don't suggest anybody build it i'm sure nobody's going to build it anyway something from 1981 um yeah so i don't think there's anything more to say um i didn't really spend a lot of money on it you know I, the pc board of course i had to pay for that i bought a whole bunch from amazon i had some previously anyway so um, yeah, and, you know, I, I had the transistors already, capacitors already had them, but, you know, I did have to buy them in the past. And CMOS chips, I did buy some new chips, only because I didn't have any, so I bought a whole bunch of them anyway, so I'll use the extras that I have for future projects. And, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's it for the reactance measuring set. Clearly, it's not going... In a box i'm not going to waste my time with it um if it goes in a box that means i'm going to use it um but this i never will use it so that's it look if you haven't already seen some of my other videos please go back to my channel check them out i've got a whole bunch of other projects um completed and um if you haven't already subscribed please consider doing so and we'll catch you on the next project bye for now